Tiffany Smith, and I'm the curator of Becoming Buoyant here at Ortega Gasset Projects. This exhibition features three artists, Kenyatta A.C. Hinkle, Melissa Alsina, and Adrian Elise Tarver. The theme of this exhibition centers black bodies of the diaspora and considers their relationship to water. It centers water as a symbol of life, departure, and return for black bodies in the diaspora. This show is initially planned to be mounted in March of 2020 when COVID hit and obviously changed the scope of what we could produce. Coming back to this exhibition at this point in time, it seems even more pertinent to address these themes. Um, I really wanted the experience of entering the exhibition to invoke a sense of calm and peace and control over forces. It's part of the reason why I'm using the metaphor of the water to think about how black bodies and black subjectivities navigate these different challenging uh, forces and environments, how we have to train ourselves to navigate through them and sort of strengthen our resolve in order to take on these different challenges. I think that quietness and stillness is essential to experiencing this exhibition. Um, it's definitely reflected in a number of the choices that I made um, from the wall color uh, to the application of this paint and the hand painted mural. And I think it's necessary given everything that we've gone through over, over the past year. I think that is pertinent that people take time to experience stillness and, and process all of the emotions, all of the psychology of everything that we've experienced, how we can continue to, to process that information and how we can use that information to move forward and move us to different and more embodied spaces. Starting here, this work by Kenyatta and E.C. Hinkle, um, the wonderful gallery assistant Zeta, best girl in town. <laughs> Part of creating this installation for the, the exhibition involved myself virtually painting this wall along with a wonderful co-director, Zahar, who's currently holding the camera. Hello. <laughs> we painted it virtually. Kenyatta is, lives in Berkeley, California, and so we communicated over Zoom, and she instructed me what to do, um, and I followed her instructions and made this abstract painting on the wall, which is very far inside of my own practice, uh, so it was a new experience for me. Now I want you to dip the sponge in the darker solution. And then I want you to go to the wall and uh, do a swipe with it going up, according to like what I texted you. This is it, like we going in, we doing it? Yeah. Hey. You wanna see Tiffany painting? Can you see this? So it would go through the middle of it. But it's like a slope up from the bottom. Yeah, the last one. Up right, just like swirly lines. Yeah. Below, yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah. right through. Yeah, yeah. And then... Yeah, it needs to go kind of like above that one a little bit more. <laughs> you need to like be like water, like flow. Like don't think so literally. This is what I have to do when I'm making the smoke. Like if I think like, it's gonna look like smoke, then I'm gonna lose it, you know? But if I just think of something that, you know, can be controlled and it's just like meandering. Yeah. Be water, my friend. Be water. Yes. Great advice. Bruce yes. Lee. You got to be like the water. In order to paint the water, you got to be like the water. I mean, is it, is it okay if I go? Uh, if please. I okay. Help. Yes. Have fun. Please, y'all please help me here. No, and it's just so sad that I have to like do this digitally and be like, what's that over there? <laughs> like, 
So down there, I want that to be a little bit darker. Like just having contact with, with, with something. Gotcha. Something darker on that side. I feel like the dad in Arrested Development when he's on house arrest. <laughs> that, that, that scene is so funny. Oh my God. And they hired that man. <laughs> the camera. Oh my God. That's right. The actor. So it's a far right. So I'm a little bit concerned about those one, two, three, four. They're, those four strokes. Like they're just so little. It looks like a face. It looks like a face in there. Right. Faces always come out. Oh my gosh, it looks like a face in somebody's hair. Oh wow, I didn't even see that. Okay, so some of those heavier sections, if they can, um, if you can maybe do one more with that like intensity of the uh, of the color over to the left, like where the wave starts. Right here. Oh, you did it. Okay, perfect. But maybe can it be? Uh, yeah, just a little bit more watered out or thinned out a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Maybe with some sea foam sponge action a little bit to break it up, but I love it. Oh, this is so exciting! This is so fun. Oh. <laughs> like, oh, so oh, no, that's beautiful. So Don't it's so hard me to when I hear like all the time. I'm just yes. saying. Yes. Oh. Good, that feels good. Oh, nice. Oh, I love the drips. Mm hmm Yes. Our cat's indigo. I love it. We're done. I'm going to buy you a drink. Both of y'all. I'm going to buy you a drink. Money in the bank. Hey, what the bank? I love it. See, and we, we talk so much about channeling. Is I like it, Jahari? Oh, Jahari, look, she's showing you. You like it? You think we did a good job? No, no. Oh, man. That'd be wonderful. Why don't you even Well, he said it looks bougie, so that means we did good. <laughs> Kinyatta's practice involves contending with the past, with ancestors, uh, through channeling of spirits. I think it's important to note that healing modalities is a big part of her practice, and motherhood. I think that's important to note also. In particular, here are these three pieces uh, Kinyatta created right at the beginning of 2020, just before the whole COVID epidemic hit. Um, so I think it was definitely coming from an intuitive place, which you know, most of her work does, but it sort of held extra weight in that context, thinking um, about how, you know, especially as an artist, that like, you're drawn to just like produce things sometimes, and you don't really know where it comes through, and you're serving as a, as a medium for these different ideas and expressions to come through. There's also like a different experience of the work, and, it, and experiencing it close up, um, it's not the same as experiencing it like via a screen. It holds a certain physicality um, that translates differently in person. Um, and I just love the way that it mirrors with um, this abstract painted background and this sort of like giant wave that's created. It's also like a beautiful moment hearing you talk about her channeling these water spirits and then when she was communicating to you and then to us and with her son literally like helping you channel yeah. something using a liquid material and it was like communicating how to use your body or like letting uh, like letting go of some things and that channel experience is then transferred to yeah. the way she communicates. Yeah. So I love the way that these two, these works connect and I love the way that like the rhythm and the language of the clouds and the, and the waves in this photograph connect into um, the waves and the markings through Kenyatta's work and Wallace's work. I love the conversation that happens. And I think that that's a contingent that's very important for me, understanding, in understanding the work, that all of these things happen simultaneously. 
right? Like it's never, you're never in one place and not in the other. Um, I think it kind of, it's like the water, it ebbs and flows. So, you know, there are times when uh, things are darker and more overwhelming and there are things where um, you can sort of ride the wave a little more with a little more strength and resilience. A lot of the subjects that she represents uh, in her photographs are definitely marginalized people within um, the sort of social hierarchy that exists there. Um, so she's definitely figure centering on figures that are outside of the mainstream, particularly outside, definitely outside of the tourist games, um, particularly somewhere like the Bahamas and Nassau. Um, the tourist experience is very, very highly curated and tourists really don't get a sense of what life is like for natives on the island. Um, and it's a very interesting paradox when you're thinking about places that people consider paradise, right? Um, like, is it not paradise for the people who live there, too? Oftentimes, in many ways, it's not. You know, based on the way that the light hits her face, um, it's also because, you know, the sun is coming at her at an angle that the sun's in her eyes. So from a further back position, it just like makes her face look a little bit more intense than it is. But when you get really close, like she's got this very soft smile here and her face really softens, right? Um, and it takes you getting in close to that detail to really understand that. There's a tendency and like a learned behavior to associate um, just negative connotations with the black bodies when we're literally just simply just being, you know, people floating in the ocean, whatever, you know, just living life. I really love the way this figure like physically sits on so many precipices. She's between, like right between girlhood and womanhood and you know, transitioning into becoming a woman. Um, she's floating on top of this water in this floating device and like literally physically almost bursting out of it because you know she's become too tall for it. So I love the way that she like sits on those boundaries. And I think a lot of people are interested in really focusing on black artists and thinking about inclusion and really centering um, black artists in a way that doesn't necessarily think about nuance and think of us as whole people. You know, it thinks about the work more as a product. The reactionary. Better, you better look good and include. Exactly. Like, there's a lot of that, mm -hmm. right? So, like, as long as it has a black body in it, like, then we've filled our diversity quota, and that doesn't help us either. We're not looking for a handout in any kind of way, like, we literally just want to be seen as whole people. I think it can also be the the joy, in a sense, of when you have an environment like this where you're sort of able to engage these conversations, like, on a deeper level and have somebody understand from another perspective like the wholeness of you and your being and what you're putting out there into the world, right? These smaller works have a little, I mean, at least in terms of yeah. color. Yeah, they've got a little green in there, so they, they start to go in that, um, in that direction, um, but I think I still picture these figures as being like near bodies of water and you know the use of the watercolor medium brings in um, that energy and I think they really holds them in a place that focuses on the water. It's also like the figures right. are in repose, right? right so they're right, right, right. Um, at rest and relaxing and that was what I was interested in highlighting like through this collection of work of Adrian's. Um, and I love the way that she uses these watercolors often as uh, smaller studies for the larger mm. works that she makes. Um, like these large oil paintings. Um, it just has a, a, a different experience. And I think she has a real mastery over the material. And I think she works really prolifically. And I really enjoy looking at the way that she shifts between different um, materials and media to express specific points of view. Exploring ideals of, of paradise and 
the tropics and you know the difference between visitor and native and how different people interact with those different spaces. So there's a lot of overlap I think between her work and, and Melissa's work, um, but manifested in um, you know a very different way. At the same time, you know this body of water can be very healing and nurturing, but in a second it, the tide can shift, pun intended, and <laughs> become something totally different. And they're you know more nefarious and dangerous and something. And you have to always honor that relationship and that space. Um, you know you need to know when the ocean can accept you in your body and when you might put yourself at risk or peril by entering into it, you know, and just like respect that relationship. One of the things I appreciated most about this year is like, is the stillness. I think the stillness was really necessary for me as I look back on it now. I just understand so much more how I was really operating in survival mode, right? And even though that was essentially how I ended up operating through all of the past year, it's just like thinking about survival mode. It was like survival in a different way. Than like all those things I thought mattered before didn't matter at all. It didn't matter if I was on time to work all the time. It didn't matter if I, you know, even showed up regularly at that job or not. Like now the job's gone. The jobs we were working remotely or like people are gone. Like people are dying, dropping left and right, you know? And <clears throat> Like how can we not give our space, ourselves space to think about all of those things and to really like absorb all of those experiences and process all of those emotions um, so that we can move forth and move forward in a way um, that's more, like moving forward with more clear intent um, and really working in a way to eliminate all the systems that don't serve us and that don't work for us. Um, and to engage new modes of thinking and operating with a society that can be more supportive, more intersectional, um, and really just help us to push us forward to you know whatever it is that we're going to build in the future. All this pressure was building for a long time. Like everything that we've experienced is not a new experience. It was just catapulted into the spotlight in a different way. Um, so that's part of the conversation also, like understanding that these are things that we deal with on a regular basis, whether they're thrust into, you know, focus within the media or not, right? And, and not just in this lifetime, not just in this country. So we're definitely crossing boundaries, thinking globally, and thinking about um, time in a sense that goes beyond our lifetime, right? So like backwards into the past and like learning from what everybody has experienced and then thinking about how that can inform the future of where we're going. Or take a guess at projects is open Saturdays and Sundays from 1 to 6 p.m. Come see Becoming Buoyant. Rated R!